Hello, everyone. Today our topic is tea. Before starting, I have a question: What's your favorite drink in your daily life? Think about it. As a Chinese, in my daily life, tea is very important. So why? Let's explore it. Today, three parts about tea will be discussed: Chinese tea, tea and daily life, tea art. Now, let's start chapter one. Everyone will get a brief introduction of tea history by the following video. Chinese people have drunk tea for several thousand years. The legend goes that Shen Nong discovered tea almost 5,000 years ago. Shen Nong is a legendary figure, sometimes referred to in English as the Divine Farmer. He is said to have taught the Chinese people the art of agriculture and well digging. Shen Nong invented the plow and hoe, and identified a myriad of herbs, many of which are used in Chinese medicine. A story goes that Shen Nong was drinking a cup of boiled water one day, and some leaves from a nearby bush blew into his cup. He was delighted by the infusion, and thus tea was invented. But tea didn't become widely popular as a beverage until the Tang Dynasty. At first, it was considered a medicinal tonic. China's ancient medical manual, the Ben Cao, attributed to Shen Nong, recorded that tea has the property to keep people awake. It was this property that got Buddhist monks interested in tea drinking. Monks would meditate for long periods, often at night, and some monks started drinking tea to stop them from falling asleep. During the early Tang Dynasty, tea was popular in the southern region of China, but not so in the north. Then a Buddhist master named Jiang Mo, originally a southerner, came to spread Zen Buddhism at Lingyan Temple at the foot of Mount Tai in what's now Shandong Province. Jiang Mo would drink tea at night to keep himself awake while meditating. Other monks in the temple and later outsiders copied this habit. Tea drinking became a customary practice. As markets sprouted up around Lingyan Temple, selling teas like those drunk by the monks, it led to a tea craze that swept across China. At the height of this craze, along came a man called Lu Yu, who wrote a book called *The Classic of Tea* or *Cha Jing* in Chinese. The book became the world's first ever tea manual. The classic of tea not only heightened the tea drinking trend, but also led to a craze for collecting teaware. Lu Yu described in the book his 24-part tea set. Other ancient texts also documented the craze amongst collectors for buying different variations of these tea sets. After the Tang Dynasty, the tradition of tea drinking changed. By the end of the Song Dynasty, improved tea production methods meant loose tea leaves tasted better than before, and this became the main form of tea in China. In the Ming Dynasty, people started to use the gaiwan, or a cup with a lid, to brew and drink their tea. Tea trade between China and Europe flourished. Today, tea remains one of the most popular beverages in the world. Well, I think all you have got some knowledge about tea history. Now I have another question: How many kinds of tea do you know? Okay, we will find it, and after learning, I will have a quiz for you. In general, Chinese classify tea according to three things. First one is color of finished leaves, and second one is the color of tea liquor. Okay, let's have a look. How many kinds of tea do we have? You can guess what's the first one. Yes, it is. It's green tea. According to the color of finished leaves, and 
tea liquor, we have green tea, white tea, yellow tea, oolong tea, black tea, dark tea. If you find it's hard to tell them, we can think about the third factor. The third one is the percentage of oxidation the tea leaves have gone through during processing. Now we can see their different oxidation. Different tea come from different areas, especially some famous tea. Because south of China's climate is usually warm and humid, which is helpful for tea tree's growth. So south of China is more productive than north of China. When we talk about tea, we must introduce some famous tea. The first one is Pu'er tea. The type is dark tea, and it's from Yunnan province. This area, Yunnan province. Next one is Oolong tea. It's called Da Hong Pao tea. It's from Fujian province. This area. Then, Tie Guan Ying tea. It's Oolong tea. It's from Fujian province too. Next one, Lu An Melon Sea tea. It's green tea from Anhui province, this area. Next one, Bi Luo Chun tea. It's green tea too from Jiangsu province, this area. Next one, Bai Hao Ying Zhen tea. It's a white tea, right? from Fujian province, this area, yes. After introducing them, a short quiz for you. Please tell me which kind of tea does every picture show according to those classification methods we have learned. First one, have a guess. Yes, it is. It's green tea, right? It's called Long Jing tea. In Chinese, we call it Long Jing tea, but in English, it has another name, Dragon, Dragon Wheel. It's from Zhejiang province. This area. Next one, are you ready? According to color, yes, it's yellow tea. In Chinese, it's called Jingshan Ying Zhen. It's yellow tea and it's from Hunan province. We can find it out. It's Hunan province. Last one. It's true. It's black tea. It's from Anhui province this area. Have you got that? Now we move on to chapter 2. In China, there are the seven items considered essential for daily life. There are firewood, rice, oil, salt, sauce, vinegar, and tea. Which shows tea plays a very important role in Chinese daily life. When people get married, in their wedding, the youngers will give the tea to the elders to show their respect. 
and when people do the sacrifice, they will have tea. And many people also treat guests with tea. And they also make friends with tea. Some people will do business with tea. In China, people can drink tea at home. They also drink tea in the restaurant. Before eating, we drink tea as an appetizer and do mingling. During eating, it serves to clear the flavor in the mouth. After eating, it's helpful to digest. Some people like to go to the tea house where people can mainly enjoy tea and dessert to chat with friends or do some business. And then I'm going to discuss with you about other countries tea culture. In America, as for tea, it seems to Chinese. In the American market, there are hundreds of Chinese oolong tea and green tea, but most of them are cold tea. This highlights that the fact that Americans drink tea with high efficiency and convenience, and they are not willing to waste time and action to brew tea. When drinking, first put ice in the cold tea or put the cold tea into the refrigerator to cool it. Unlike Chinese people, most people prefer iced tea to hot tea. In England, British people like to drink black tea. Afternoon tea is most popular. When they drink afternoon tea, their tea baskets with tea, bread, biscuit, brown sugar, milk, lemon, and so on. In France, they like to mix with milk and sugar in some places. There are also fresh eggs mixed with tea, and then and sugar to drink. In Pakistan, there are few who do not add milk instead of lemon slices, also called lemon black tea. In Iran, people drink tea every day and drink a lot. Because of Iran's prohibition of alcohol, tea replaces wine, can refresh keep fit, and wake up the stomach. Tea house is a place for tea meeting and business. They also have a different way to drink tea. They often hold the sugar with their thumb and forefingers, dip it in the tea, and eat it. It's interesting, right? In Japan, 90% of the tea produced in is green tea. In terms of production, Chinese green tea is mostly fried, while Japanese tea is mostly steamed, then baked on the fire or directly dried in the sun. After the general comparison, let's go back to the very beginning question. Why do I drink tea every day? The following video will explain for you. With 11 kinds of minerals, tea helps refresh the brain and detoxify the body. If you are an office worker, it's good to drink some tea, which can shield you from the ambiguous computer radiation. Besides, you might not know that the choice of tea changes from season to season. You can have a cup of flower tea to fend of the cold in spring, or a cup of green tea to cool you during the hot summer weather. A wulong tea can cleanse your body and make you feel refreshed in autumn. In turn, black tea is the best in winter for its tonic effect.
Won't you have some tea, please? Now we can move on to the last part. There is a video about tea art.
to try to make a cup of tea right now, right? Go ahead. By the way, here are some tips deserve to consider. You should think about water temperature, immersion time, and tools for better taste. For example, for green tea, it's better to use 70 to 80 centigrade water than immerse tea leaves for two minutes, and then Drink it in glass jug or pour it without the lid. Today, our introduction of tea is going to be over. It's my great honor to be here with you. Thank you for listening and learning different wonderful culture. We are Confucius Institute. Other interesting events will be held. Welcome to follow us. Have a great day. Bye.